it's a it's very impressive sometimes how i see how my body records you know because our bodies are always st storing stories you know? and yeah. everything here everything we look you know so which i believe that if we use that form of dance as a way to really heal and as a way to really reflect mm. we can always dig down and know what why why and why is everything why are we here what's the purpose of now you know and i think we we're living in a world where everything is fast everything is happening we're walking we're busy you know and we forget to you know because if i'm moving like this i'm dancing you know so it's always also what i always tell my friends there is not there is no right and wrong you know? it's mm. about movement and every movement can tell a story depending on how you approach it whether it's saying um, you know how you approach it and how you decide to to show it so i think when it comes to really show emotions i believe that is vulnerability also because if you're vulnerable, then you're in a space where you can really learn how you're feeling and embrace it and try to know why you feel the way you're feeling. goes way back you know I, I grew up in a muslim family you know and i grew up in the Yerambo, and the Yerambo is uh, out of kigali so i would just tell you you know if you if you think about new york times square so the Yerambo is like times square so that Yamirambo that I'm talking about is a neighborhood where you find a lot of different lifestyle. You know, you see a lot of Muslims, you see a lot of uh, um, people from outside, from East Africa, from West Africa. So it's a lot of cultures. It's very diverse. And uh, it's very also active when you look at the people that uh, live in Yamirambo compared to other cities in Kigali. So which means growing up in Yamirambo, it really played a big impact how I saw life and how I see life today. So that brings me to dance and how I started to dance and what brought me to dance. I've always loved music as a kid. And one day, you know, I mean, I'm living room, I'm listening to music. There was this uh, musical jerk. It was a song of the new boys. These guys are from the US. So at the time, I used to really love to be online on, on my computer. I, I did a lot of research on YouTube. I was a very curious kid. Then that music kept going in my head. And, uh, and going back in time, yes, I loved music since young. I used to listen to Michael Jackson. But that time, that's when I really started to watch videos on YouTube and start to imitate and, you know, look at and start to research, oh, b-boying, breath dancing, hip hop, all this times then i find myself having this passion of music and dance at the same time so that was the time when i was starting uh high school so i was around 12. then everything after was uh yeah it was a journey and it's still a journey today i mean dance is a part of our culture you know originally randoms if you look at our culture it's full of dance everything is dance but the okay. problem is colonization i think being uh born in a country that was colonized i think the thing is also to realize that there was a time that people forgot about their culture you know and they started to really focus on the western culture so me being born it was not a big deal to dance ritual events you know so it's not something that I didn't grow up in a family that was of artists, so that they made me get close to that. But I think also, yeah, having colonization in that makes the dance not be so interested, interesting for mm. people. Maybe the ones who have like families that are very conservative, maybe they did, but not me. So, which means having urban dance as something that comes past to you. It's not also the the something that people are used, especially your family. They are like, hmm, 
why would you be a dancer? And living in a society that is coming from the horrible history of genocide, you know, where we lost a lot of people, but then at the same time, this is a a country that is reconstructing itself. So which means every yeah. everything needs to be constructed again. So I think, yeah. And it was a bit of uh, stress having that passion and also seeing that it's not something that is respected in society or you don't see anyone who came before you who can inspire you, who is around, you know? So that made me have a lot of curiosity and also a lot of struggle to finding news and finding and that made me be more curious to just go on YouTube, do research and know, ah, okay, so if this is not here, but then at the same time, you're young because I was young, you know, I was still in high school, I was studying, you know, I didn't know what I want in my life, you know, I, mm. I think I was on a journey of just discovering myself. So I kept going and that passion and love of music and dance, everything just came on the way just to discover, yeah, like our weddings are you have mm. dance, a lot of dance in our weddings. And also when you, we have a ceremony called Dusaba. So mm. it's when it's a ceremony where you go to ask for the wife, for the hands mm. of the wife to the family. So those ceremonies are full of dance and music, traditional music, you know, and people, it's a, it's a normal thing now, I would say. But on the side, as a dancer, as a professional dancer, I didn't have a chance to start on traditional. So traditional came after mm. I started to use dance as a profession. Yeah. But then yeah, and, and what? Mm. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I, could you repeat that? I was going to uh, dance is in our uh, in our everyday life. So in different ceremonies and uh, yeah, they still, yeah. How am I feeling? You know how. Uh, uh, how am I doing mentally or emotionally, you know? So all I know is that every time I'm dancing, I feel good. You know, it's something that mm. I know, like I can communicate it in a way that I'm not able to communicate maybe verbally, you know? And um, also when it comes to emotions, like when I'm maybe like going through something and dancing, it, I feel like I'm releasing those emotions. Being able to express the that maybe express while I'm crying, expressing uh, verbally to a friend, and you know, and so it's a lot of emotion when it comes to dance. It's it's that passion, it's that thing that is always been there, you know, and it's that thing that even when you are in those moments when you don't feel inspired to dance, because I have those moments when I don't feel like I want to dance, but it's always so fascinating for me to see how dance always plays a big part in my life, you know, everything that I've done, everything that I'm doing, it's, yeah, that love for dance is spiritual, and the more I'm growing, like right now, before we meet, you know, I was thinking about like how lately I've been really thinking about going back to my roots, going back to decolonizing my, my dad, you know, and actually embracing the African dance and so by that I I applied recently for a program at uh, it called the sub it's a school from Senegal so it's a school yeah. of dance and I'm excited to go there because I got accepted yeah. and nice congratulations thank you thank you so it's gonna be a new journey for me because it is a very good school with a lot of uh, mm. international choreographers that will be coming from around the world and to also really have this chance to learn about African dance you know so I think after that then I will know how to even explain more how I feel when I'm dancing because all I know is that it's always an, a special feeling and to know that mm. that's dance it's a part of me you know there are so many languages that my body speaks when I'm dancing that I also it's a part of me, but I think also I'm at a point in life where I really want to know, like, what's the history of us Africans in dance, you know, and uh, really dig down and learn from the best. And I think that can allow me to even dig inside me and not only dance for fun, but also really dancing for research and for really restoring those information that our sisters, you know, have left because our body if we really at see it our body they store so much emotions you know and mm -hmm. i believe also they store our ancestors in our dna and, you know 
and uh, the more that's the more we know we are, the more we, we dig, dig, dig down to the truth, you know. And yeah. also, yeah, I think that's the research I'm on right now. Me personally, I I'm always open to learn. I think anything I'm really down to learn, and that's a part of the game, you know. It's to just always try to be better and to be open. Because I think I have all, I don't know, I have that voice that can bring me to my comfort zone of being comfortable and be like, but you are a hip hop dancer, you know, you've done Afro, you've done some contemporary training, so it's fine. No, don't go far from that. You know, you're good at what you yeah. do. And I also right. have that voice that tells me, what if, what if you would know more? What if you would know? Yeah, it, it's not really, it's, it's interesting for me. And telling you this is because I look at how, when I started to dance, you know, I start to dance, I, have, I don't go to school of dance. There is no school of dance. Everything is about curiosity, discovery, watching videos. But then the more years goes and the more I understand, oh my God, everything that I say that dance is more than just dance, I'm understanding it more and more. So the more, yeah, the more the journey becomes more interesting. Mm. It's so much curiosity. So you're saying it's it's also very intellectual, uh, emotional, and mental as much as it is physical. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Because if we look at dance, it's physical. You know, you mm -hmm. you you are dancing, you're moving, so you are at the same time walking out. But you're also right. looking at your feet because you're creating all these shapes. You know, you're thinking, if you look at hip hop, you look at so many styles, you are a character, you are in theater, you are, you're somehow actually in your own universe and you're taking people in your universe, you know? So it's, it's emotionally, but it's also, I think, stimulates your brain, you know, to mm -hmm. think on and also transport your spirit and be like, okay, I'm in being, in a space where you can move and discover and know more your body so it's everything at the same time yeah. i love chris brown i feel like when you look at chris brown performing he's always looking fresh you know even in the mm -hmm. times when because he when he's on tour he's doing choreos every time you know but you look at the dancers that he's dancing with and you see that he's also selecting the dancers that are somehow in the same direction with him because you look at the style you look at the energy he has i mean he's unique and also it's also he knows how he works his body you know because you wouldn't even notice if he messes up you know so he he's just he's just being him you know and i think and mm -hmm. so being unique you know having dance skills but also performing acting at the same time so he's just um he's just a, a god you know i would say so yeah yeah i agree yeah, man i love i love chris brown too yeah chris brown is he's chris brown yeah it's chris brown <laughs> <laughs> breezy yeah yeah L love the guy you think you think a lot of his moves he's choreograph choreographing on his own like he's designing those moves on the fly i think so i mean he has a choreographer but I think also he he gives a lot of dance because sometimes you see him performing with dance with his dancers and they are so good. But you see that he is the one with uh, a clean, I would say, clean choreography. Because then you know, ah, maybe he's the choreographer, you know. Okay. So I don't think, yeah, I don't think Chris Brown would give uh, something less, you know, because already even if you look at the dancers, he always hires. Those are really good dancers, but they also owe him so much respect, you know. So yeah, he's a hard worker. He's a really hard worker. Okay, that's good to know. That's good to know. It's coming from you. It it definitely seems to be that he is a hard worker, and he puts out a product that is so, like you said, fresh and just so yeah. on point, and just kind of nails it every single time. I mean, I can swear to God, like when a new video drops on YouTube, shows up on my feed. I'm like, this is going to entertain me, man. For the next five, six minutes, I am going to be just locked in. This guy is going to sing, dance, do all the things he does typically. And he's been doing it for so long. He's got such a long shelf life, hasn't he? Yeah, for a while. Look, this guy's been, he's been here for a while. 
and the crazy thing about him every every song he makes is a hit right and that's the crazy thing to me too yeah it's almost like no song is sounds sort of mediocre it's just everything is on point uh, yeah. anyway I, I i this is my love affair with chris brown my my wife will get a laugh out of this one because i blast his music and i'm dancing to it and i'm just like i work out to it i mean I'm, i have a huge love affair with <laughs> his music and things like that i mean when it comes to a choreography you're the one to think about what do i want people to feel when i do this choreography which kind of emotions do i want to re transmit to this choreography so that comes also with your face expression you know and everything but uh when it comes to f- freestyle for example like free form as you say it's more about the moment it's about how you're feeling in the moment it's about how you're expressing yourself you know i feel like when i'm dancing i'm more in so many characters you know i can be here sad i can be here hyped i can be here closed so it's it's a lot of emotions happening at the same time but um when it comes to choreography or uh, either it's a piece i'm choreographing or it's a class that i'm teaching it's always about how what do I want to transmit to my people? What do I want to tell them through this career? So, the Move Africa is a concept, the concept of uh, really okay. share African, uh, different African urban styles. So, I started doing regular classes as normal, and then the more and more growing, I was like, okay, now it's time that I start to curate different experiences. So, Time to time, I curate classes from different choreographers of Kigai, and then I create classes for them. And I also did uh, the camp, the Move Africa Dance Camp last year, so which was really nice. We did it for three days, so now I would call it a festival because I wanna, I wanna grow it. And um, when it comes to the styles, it's more about urban dance. Either it's African urban dance or bringing in hip hop, different styles, either it's popping. So I try to take advantage also when I have choreographers that are coming in Kigali so that I can always curate experiences from uh, pro, like curate experiences for them. And also, yeah, when it comes to Move Africa, the vision is more to have a dance lab. So the dance lab, is my goal to have a space where we gonna be hosting different choreographers from around the world and the purpose will be actually to really research and share the knowledge from different aspects of life and also cultures but then also really creating that possibility of creating bridges between Rwanda and the world and uh, bringing in talents and creating opportunities around that concept and create scholarships for young dancers you know partnerships with dance schools so that's the big vision but uh, we all have to start somewhere so at the moment it's more as a dance studio i think this makes me think about one interview i observed from uh, mama jaman she's the choreographer and the founder of the school in senegal we call the sub she was saying dance is education dance is provocative and dance is what else did you say communication you know and I think dance can really, 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 really contribute to this world in terms of how we live together, you know, when it comes to politics, when it comes to ratio, clans, everything that would really separate humankind and remind us why. And when the, I think one of the issues that I observed is more about the stereotype behind it, the stereotype behind and um, dance and to also really take dance as something okay it's fun that's it it's just you're there it's a concert you know it's a dance performance and that's it you know and while actually it's more than that it's more than that because you are reconnecting yourself you are getting to know yourself even deeper you know on a spiritual level and, uh, how so how, how would you say you're getting to know your, yourself better by moving your body i mean if i take for example personally every time i'm moving example maybe i'm learning a choreography or i'm taking a class or i'm creating it's a it's very impressive sometimes how i see how my body records you know because our bodies are always storming 
stories you know? and everything clear everything we look you know so which i believe that if we use that form of dance as a way to really heal and as a way to really reflect mm. we can always dig down and know what why why and why is everything why are we here what's the purpose of now you know and i think we we're living in a world where everything is fast everything is happening we're walking we're busy you know and we forget to you know because if i'm moving like this i'm dancing you know, so it's always also what I always tell my friends, there is not, there is no right and wrong. You know? It's mm. about movement and every movement can tell a story depending on how you approach it, whether it's, um, you know, how you approach it and how you decide to, to show it. So I think when it comes to really show emotions, I believe dance is vulnerability also. Because if you're variable, then you're in a space where you can really learn how you're feeling and embrace it and try to know why you feel the way you're feeling. So I guess that's how I see it. That's how I see it. So dance is a way of also like introspecting and reflecting on your thoughts, your emotions, your feelings and things like that. It's, 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 uh, it's actually, it serves a deeper function in that sense. And that's, yes. I mean, of course it's your personal experience and mm. I mean, it makes sense to me intuitively when I dance in the, <laughs> in the, <laughs> when I dance in the shower, it's like, it's just like this very kind of release kind of a feeling. Um, yeah. and I think to myself, like, I wish this was more normalized where if I do this in the middle of, you know, like a bunch of people, how would I be embarrassed? I mean, I would be embarrassed or something and I'm moving my body, but I guess, yeah. Can you speak to that? Like, what do you? How does one overcome that embarrassment, man? Like, you know, there's this kind of like, I don't know, like this, this it's not normalized to kind of break into a dance in, in the middle of, you know, like you're hanging out, you're socializing, things like that. It's, it's like people have inhibitions about moving their body. Like, how do you, what, what do you have to say for that? How do we you... were seeking for people to, it's like we are afraid. We are afraid of what people think. We are afraid of what people we see. And while actually we're not dancing for people, we're dancing for ourselves. You know, and it shouldn't be an issue for us to be in a space and dance and really move your body the way you're supposed to be moving it, you know, and I, I think also having that pressure doesn't make you comfortable, it doesn't make you dance for really dancing for yourself. But at the end you're dancing and you're not dancing for yourself, you're dancing for people, but then you, if you look around, you're like, okay, what did I get from that ripple? It's just, you're, you're trying to please, but you're not pleasing yourself. You're not being you. And I think that can really, really be bad in terms of uh, lack of confidence. It can be bad in terms of uh, uh, not appreciating yourself, you know? And first of all, yeah, I mean, doing that is, is also something we need to question. It's about not appreciating who you are and accepting mm -hmm. how you think and accepting, okay, I don't need to be like somebody else. I, I am me. I was, I look like me. I, I, nobody else is me. It's me. So, which means it's, it's, it's nice and it's normal to move how you move. Then the rest, if we go technically in dance, the rest is to learn new skills. But then the first of all, it's to have that mentality of doing you, doing you in that space. And yeah, just it's, do it's, you, do you do you just the dance that that's for yourself. Um, it's okay. The rest of the world can, I mean, can, but, but still, I mean, I, I always think to myself like, ah, and people kind of like, look, are, gonna, are they going to look at me? I get self-conscious, things like that. Um, and I, I guess, I mean, you answered that. It's like, it's, it's really being honest to yourself. Like who, how do you feel? What, what kind of emphasis are you putting on yourself? Um, yeah. who, who is this? Who is this person? You know, is this person feeling like they want to move? Um, yeah. and if it is, then, then there's no embarrassment in that. That's just you. Cause how are people going to like what you do if you're not liking it? And also, yeah, it should be a world of differences, a world where we embrace our differences, you know, and also that's the same with dance. You know, we embrace it. We're like, okay, that's who I am. That's how, and then the rest is just adding, adding skills and yeah. But the more you are you, the more you also open to learn more stuff. And, mm. Wow, to everything you learn to 
bring it together with you yourself and to create yourself and only the unique way you want to present yourself you know so it's i think it's the first thing is to do you do you and uh, it's normal it's normal to be nervous it's normal to be anxious those are normal feelings it's also okay to develop trust in yourself to trust yourself even if you don't have any trust in yourself so to try to really believe in something you don't see be delusional mm. it takes a lot of courage though yeah a lot of courage but you know you try it you fail then you're like oh, you try again so i think yeah really it's it's about believing in something you don't see you just believe you have faith you believe in god that's it you have faith yeah this um you know so, so, something i want to add to this is that you know i've been doing I've, i've been getting into all sorts of things lately manzi is that i've been writing blogs online i used to be an engineer by the way and for 18 years you know i just long long time i spent behind a desk and in computers and things like that and working whatever engineering stuff and then i got into i i i kind of full time got into this in the last two, year and a half now you know i've been writing blogs i've gotten into creating music doing some doodling art and um writing blogs online the things that i i deeply care about my home country of india things along those lines um and it topics in general like one of the things that pops out at me is that uh, somebody made this comment to me uh a week ago i i post all my artwork on behance and somebody made the comment that um creativity is uh, is allowing yourself to make mistakes and art is the process of knowing which ones to keep and i'm sure you've heard this this guy and i thought that was such a profound comment like yeah that's so true it, it's like creativity to me it's like when i scribble on my thing or i'm i'm working the dj app or i'm writing and stuff it's like it's a lot of like just letting my mind just free just unlocking it like don't put any constraints on it just allow myself to completely like even this conversation you know i have a i have a script here but i just use it as a general guideline but i kind of just have fun doing it And so I I guess I wanted to know your perspective on that Manzi is that like what is like how much of what you do is just letting yourself just creatively make mis- mistakes in quotes just kind of move your body and how you feel and then you you realize like oh shit this feels good or this looks good or I I like the aesthetic of this move or whatever is that is that really like is that ring a bell I'm sure it does but Uh, can you speak to that a little bit yeah so i think as an artist and as a dancer you have to it's not every day the same the same way but you have to have a room where you have to allow mistakes because there is no room for growth if there is no mistakes then mm. you're just in a cup on you are in a space where you may be doing rehearsals with your fellow dancers but you don't take time to be like okay we need to work hard on this you just tell them just ah really nice really nice and then you're just in a comfort zone you are maybe for example teaching classes for example like i teach classes and then you end up only teaching classes so you are you think you are dancing but you're just making money because what you're doing it's what you know you're not growing you know so you need to also be in a space where you are applying for school or you are joining professional trainings or either it's in your country or in another city you know looking for opportunities for growth because otherwise you just avoiding mistakes why like for me if you're looking for growth you want to meet mistakes it's on the way so mistakes is a part of growth you do a mistake today you're like hey okay next time i know i'm, I'm going to try this way so yeah i believe that you have to have a role in mistakes you have to also have a room of patience of knowing okay i know what i want this is what i want I'm not managing now but how do I need to move around it but not getting angry because that whether you want it or not that is going to be a part of the journey of being an artist you know some days whether you're a musician or performer you're going to go to the stage and then maybe you do a little mistake or you forgot a little something you're not going to stop you know it's it has to be a part of it you just have to go and continue and it's beautiful also the outcome because everything that is happening is being decided in that moment there is no premeditated to, yeah to repeat or to perfection what you're doing it's just everything is happening you know? 
so I find it's very also nice to it and it still builds you and builds that confidence inside you to be like okay if I'm going I'm going for it there is no nothing stopping me I forget it's okay I keep going <laughs> but even that it, it brings the emotion the emotion people who are watching you they because you're in a survival mode you know you you're trying to prove to yourself that you can do it Mm. It's sometimes it's a hard feeling to explain, you know, it's, it's freedom, yeah. I would say it's freedom, it gives me freedom when I'm in my own space moving, you know, I'm dreaming and that, tap, tap, tapping into that kid, you know, that young me, that young me was always playful, you know, that innocent me, so <laughs> it's intimate at the same time, it's vulnerable I'm dancing you know it's very vulnerable it's very intense mm-hmm. it's, very, it's special it's special to really put yourself in that space so yeah there's a lot to gain from it yeah that. um the genocide that occurred in the 90s in Rwanda um like how how is the situation right now and like I, I I was reading up on it what the history of it was and how things got resolved like do you sense that things are much more normalized now all that like not all of it but the society is coming back together and mending those kind of divides those fractures in society are healing themselves and things like that is that is that the general mood in Rwanda and could you speak to like, I mean I, I I watch video after video I read up on reports and stuff like Rwanda is kind of a, an amazing African success story in terms of how they've advanced their economy and general human development and things like that like can you speak a little bit of that like just as an ignorant yeah. asian person who lives in america yeah i mean if you look at the story of rwanda rwanda was always a country that was united you know even still when we had clans our differences we were always united but if you look at the coming of the colonizers coming to colonize the country you know they make this separation because they saw the country the people they had a lot of strong culture so to separate them was they needed to find a strategy to manage to separate them because the culture was very strong but after the genocide against the tutsi what happened is the new government uh, that is on they decided to really create the spirit of forgiving each other you know and reconciliation so reconciliation was really a big part in our culture so it's something that us maybe someone from outside can never understand but it's real you know we call in the station walked out and uh, people are living together there is no Hutu there is no Tutsi you know so it's a very sensitive subject and it's also there now so now we have a Rwanda where we are all Rwandans so we don't really tap into the past and be like ah oh, you you are this you, you are this you know because that came with uh, bad image because of the colonization and the history behind it so we are in a it's the i would say it's the best time to live in rwanda now yeah because really? the post inside the generation so this is the best time to see the evolution of Rwanda. you know everybody's talking about rwanda in america everybody's talking about rwanda in europe in asia in africa i mean kigali is the cleanest city in africa you know you come to mm-hmm. rwanda you so surprised you know every time i'm walking around as a runner i'm also like wow this is my country it's very beautiful you know you look at the people very welcoming you look at the internet you look at the economy how it's growing fast you look at the education you look at even the creative scene is growing so you know you, you see a lot of uh, growth and you you look at how many years it's been now now we're gonna have a commemoration of 30 years so it's not a long time ago so it's also, yeah, definitely a special place to travel to. Rwanda is a special place to travel and to see and learn about the history, you know. And the sad thing is that a lot of people always focus on the history of uh, the horrific events that happened in 1994. But there is a lot of history of Rwanda, you know, there is a lot of history, you know. And um, so, yeah. I guess we are the ones to write our own history right now, you know, so that's why I say it's the best time to to visit Rwanda and to see and discover Rwanda because, yeah, Rwanda is new and I think what the president always say, yeah, this is Rwanda and uh, nothing is not, nothing is going to change, you know, 
because we have nothing to lose. We know where we came from. You, you know, when the genocide happened, I was not around. So, but, right. Um, I think reconciliation goes through so many things. You know, it goes through theater. I think also art played a big role. You know, through theater and through um, movies, through education uh, in in different uh, village. You know, and uh, okay. I think the government put so much effort into that, you know, so... And also, we have to know, Rwandans are very united as a nation, you know. So it's not something that came after the genocide, no. This was something that we Rwandans have, have already, already had. Mm. Well, the differences we had in the past, we were united. So I think it's also that negative image that people can have and wonder how would these people, after horrific history, how would these people reconciliate, you know. So I think so to remind who we are, you know, to also people know like, yeah, nobody after seeing the horrible history we went through, nobody wished to go back. So which means everyone was looking forward to a change, to have a beautiful new country constructed, you know, and to really try to heal with time. You know? So yeah, that's what I would say. Yeah, would you would you ever travel to India, man, sometime to to teach or or have yeah, I have, uh, I have so many Indian friends, actually. And, uh, Do you? Yeah. Are there a lot of Indians in Rwanda, like people of Indian origin in Rwanda? Well, there's so many Indians. So many Indians. Okay. Who grew up here, Indians who had the generations. Uh, and uh, yeah, I love Indian food, by the way. I love Indian food. Yeah. I have this yeah. local Indian restaurant that you could eat in town. In. Oh, yeah. I love some Anapuri. I eat different stuff, you know, but mainly yeah. like food from India. So it's a really nice restaurant. And um, the curious thing about India, I have it. I would love to go, you know, because I've been in this color festival here in Kigali. How do you call it again? Holy. Yeah, holy. And yeah, uh, yeah just keep, you know, I, I, I love uh, different cultures. So I think India. Yeah. Would be nice. It would be fun. So when I finished high school, I was still dancing, but then uh, I went straight to university. So I didn't really have time to pause. So when I finished high school, I went straight to university and I did mass communication for three years, a bachelor. Then uh, at the same time, when I was doing my bachelor, I was dancing. Uh, sometimes have gigs, I would practice on the side. Okay. But when I finished university, I was still dancing, but still also at the same time trying out. I worked on TV stations and I find out, ah, this was not really my thing. I liked it, but it was really taking from my passion. And then I also, yeah, then I started to do podcasting, you know? So I, I was like, okay, yeah. let me... Yeah, how, how did that come about? Like, can you, can you, what, what, uh, how did you get into podcasting? Why into podcasting? Uh, podcasting, I was sitting with a friend and she was the one who introduced me to podcasts. She was like, Mansi, maybe you should do a podcast. So then I started to look into it. So then I started to be interested and I was like, oh, let me get a microphone. Okay. Then uh, that's how I started. Then I had the idea to start my podcast and then I was like, okay. And yeah, do it. The only way now we can really bring more adults in our everyday life is more about using us as a tool to really bring together people to do better in whatever they're doing, you know, and also use them as a change, as a tool for change, you know. Or even it's, um, for example, like in Rwanda, we have this thing called Muganda. Mm. So Muganda is like um, an annual cleaning like general cleaning that we all do in our villages where we live. You know? So it's mandatory. So one Saturday in a month, we do Umuganda. So that Umuganda is something that actually helped our country to be cleaner and in the city of Kigali, you know. So now it's an example. How can we bring dance to make this kind of activities like Muganda create or initiative that can bring society together, that can bring people to really... There is this thing we used to do, me and my friends when we were young, you know, and uh, it was a friend from the US who is Randy's, who brought the idea, and he brought the idea of Hip Hop for Hop, and Hip Hop for Hop was an initiative where we would create a show full of hip hop, 
and learn you know MCing, dancing, beatboxing. But then we would really grab all the tickets we would have, and we would go de- depending on what we're ticketing, you know. And we would go and either buy some clothes for kids, for some families, you know, and either it's food, either it's material for school, you know. And that was a way to use that as a tool, you know. That's as a way for social change. So I think mm. the more we believe that we can bring dance in our social social change and believe how impactful it can be. So I think that would really even give us more ideas to know how do we with the future we're going in internet, everything that is happening, how do we bring dance in our everyday life so that we keep, you know, bringing this art form to really promote any social change that we need to that need, needs to happen you know how, how does this muganda muganda or muganda what is the actual word uh, muganda 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 yeah. like uganda it's muganda so this ritual no, that you speak of muganda muganda yes did i get that right okay yeah. <laughs> sorry mm. um so the entire you said the entire village has to come together to clean yeah. the village um yeah. how does it work in urban environments how does it work in kigali for example i mean we clean the streets maybe we have the dead roads that have so many grass and then we say okay these houses will be cutting these grasses these houses will be doing maybe the cleaning of those streets or oh, there is a neighbor that needs a treat maybe to be this way or something to be cleaned there okay let's go there let's do it so it's like a community work you know and then at the end we're like okay we've worked done this and this okay next week we're looking forward to maybe work on that that's what is needed in our village and then also the government also obviously they bring they give prices to people who are doing better than others maybe you know so that will bring that motivation of the team not to be a car is, is it yeah sorry to interrupt you again i'm i'm so curious like is it is it mandatory to do this is is everybody absolutely asked to do this yeah everybody has to do this wow it's so cool and and what about the day is it a is it a weekend or is it during a weekday how do... just yeah. just like a saturday from 8 a.m to 11 30 it's not a lot okay of... okay and then people just show up and then they they have all these kind of cleaning tools and then they say all right we got to clean these things up we got to upkeep this stuff we got to maintain this other things and yeah. nobody really complains everybody shows up like nobody nobody That's says right. to you i'm about this cleaning i'm i i, I i'm not going to clean no nobody says something like that everybody shows up everybody That's shows bad. up before they they miss out for sure you always have to yeah to miss but uh, some people they miss they all uh, and some people join so but they also as a village you are organized so you have punishments to give to people who are not showing up when oh, okay so it's but uh, in general i think a lot of people show up because it's a saturday where things are closed cars are closed so it's yeah you should come okay. to random okay. you should come to random absolutely brother um uh, i mean i just have to get it i hope the visa process is not too hard i have an indian passport so it's always Rwanda hard to get it. Rwanda is the easiest place to travel to. Okay. To okay. But the airport and just say, okay, I'm here to visit the country. I also made a friend Manzi. Here is his number. Here is his address. Okay. Okay. Then. okay. You know I mean? would freaking love it, and I'd be honored to <laughs> to, sure. to, to visit. Honestly, and I'd... yeah, there is a lot to discover. A lot of creative scene that is growing. You know. Mm-hmm. the countryside so much history and a lot of things we need to discover and learn so which is really really interesting it, i think yeah i i wanted to ask you that question too is that how much like you know you're you're into the arts and things like that like how much of um like in a general sense how much is there acceptance towards art as a professional undertaking like are more people getting into art these days do you see more people kind of getting into that kind of creative space yeah like i would say that uh if you look at 
let's say five years ago, you know, five years ago, we, we, we would say that we had a really growing but struggling scene, you know, like right now, of course, we always have a lot of struggles, you know, but I think at this point, it's, a, it's that time when the country is having a spotlight, you know, and you feel like the art scene also is growing because of a lot of events happening, you know, a lot of uh, people coming into the country. So that's also brings in the aspect of thinking about the arts and the creative scene so that's i think it's uh that's why i told you it's the best time to live in Rwanda to see how growing it is happening and mm. growth with its artists and those individuals so it's uh so creativity but i still think that uh when it comes to creating through inspiration that comes from our sisters of our history you know and really be more experimental that's on the side of artists to what I'm talking about. I think that you still need uh, a little bit of uh, guidance because you look at uh, everything that is happening, but it's a bit of a bridge because people are really pressured. And I think we're all pressured. I Me mean, too, in terms of uh, whether it's social media, whether it's the showbiz, you know, everything that is out there. You know, so, and that's why I'm going back to school, as I told you, so that I can do mm -hmm. what I can really know as an African performer, as an African dancer, what, why am I here? What do I want to keep out there? What kind of message want to tell to the world? And how do I want to really communicate to my sisters? But uh, the growth is definitely there, and uh, we see it every day. I don't know if you follow What's happening? You should follow this page, visit Rwanda, and you will see a, a bit of uh, the tourism action is growing also. Okay. So, yeah. And this, this you you mentioned like when we were talking about doing a podcast, you mentioned you were going to an art residency, uh, like for a month oh, yeah. or something like that. that like what? Sad. What did you? What did you learn? What? What kind of? By the way, man, like I gotta tell you, Manzi, mm -hmm. um, because I was as of researching for um for this podcast i was like i never knew i'm you know as as one might not there's this genre of afro house like you know and man i fucking love that music it's so good <laughs> it's so dope yes it is so good and i i you know i stumbled across you know i'm sure you've heard of these names macadam and things like that like i'm like it sounds so damn good and i i hope it reaches more of the world. Like I, I, I never heard. I mean, I'm sure it's it's kind of a hot music thing. I'm not like a aficionado or anything like that. But thank God. I mean, I'm thinking like thank God I did this podcast because I got exposed to a new genre of music, which is really really no, fun. Yeah, no. no, there is a lot of. Do you know my piano? You know my piano, right? No, I haven't. Okay, I, <laughs> no, I haven't. I will be. I will be checking you the should, whoever it is. The, uh, trending in Africa right now. You know, so it's a okay. band from Africa. It's really been trending. So yeah, you, you need to come to Kigali, man. Now you have a reason to come. I, I mean, I always had a reason to come. I, I mean, I, um, I, I, <laughs> I, I, I want. I definitely want to visit African countries. Um, and and I had friends uh, who were Rwandans, but I was in engineering school back in Bangalore, India. There were a lot of Rwandans who came over to Bangalore to go to MBA school and dental school back in the uh, late 90s, early 2000s, you know. And so I got along really well with them because we played a lot of basketball. So and and they were like chill people. I was like, yeah, these guys are, are cool. So yeah, I, I there's absolutely no reason for me to not to not ever show really up. Interested about um, experimentation, you know, experimenting uh, of all these tools when it comes to visual, when it comes to audio. When it okay. comes to movement, when it comes to storytelling also, you know, and I'm on a journey where I'm trying to really create a um, space of ecology, a space where it's going to be a space for every artist, but with really the main focus on dance and how to really use dancing and transmit that to different aspects of all different forms, you know, whether it's podcasting, whether it's... Um, film with that um theater you know and research and social change you know so it's bigger than that it's more about really transforming lives using dance as a tool for social change you know 
I think when it comes to that, there are also question and that to really keep that to raw creation side so that we we use the AI as an advantage, but then really mm-hmm. keeping that raw emotion of the art and the story we really want to give out there. And that I think is where the goal is because we, we want to be fast, but we also want to be ourselves so that we don't end up yeah. being controlled with machines. Of, right, right, right. Yeah, I think more of them giving us inputs and inspiring us, but also keeping ourselves focused on the um, storytelling that uh, tap yeah. into real creation. Yeah, I, I the one of my favorite examples of how I use AI is that I have this tool called Soundtrap, where I create all these tunes and beats and things like that, and after a while after i've assembled some tracks and stuff and i enjoy it i'm like having fun with it i like how it sounds and then i'll say ai hey, and i'll add an additional beat to this and it, it it reads what i've done and it just kind of automatically weaves that in and it's fantastic i'm like ah that's nice you know and just so it's it still maintains the uh, what's that it's really nice it's really nice to see yeah yeah and it's, and, and it's like I love it because it, it kind of like it reduces the burden of me trying to do everything from scratch, right? Mm-hmm. Hey man, if you're if you're if you're busy, if you need to go, I'm absolutely sensitive to your time. I know you're a busy man. Like please let me know when, when you want to wrap I'm up. In, uh, five minutes. Okay, okay, no worries, man.